In this video, we are talking about product call and precision. This is not a uh, name of the novel of job posting. This is a very powerful tool, both used in uh, statistics and machine learning. Let's consider what does it mean recall and precision. So, how do we usually measure the effectiveness of classification method? Uh, as we previously considered, usually we divide the number of wrong decisions onto the number of total decisions. So, if we have one wrong decision out of uh, 100 samples, then our error will be 1%, or uh, correspondingly, the accuracy will be 0.99 or 99%. Uh, the question arises, is it a suitable criterion? Is it, a, is it always a suitable criterion for the assessment of classification algorithm? Consider an example of um, a rare disease classification. So we have a very rare case um, uh, when a patient have, uh, has some disease. And suppose that only one patient out of 100 has this rare disease. And uh, we have labels, y is equal to 1 if disease is present, and uh, y is 0 otherwise. So consider a very dull <laughs> classification algorithm with, which always classifies the data of the patients as having no disease. So it just prints the value of y equal to 0. So if we have one patient uh, having disease out of 100, this algorithm will produce error of uh, 0.01 and accuracy of 0 0.99 and the question arises does, is it a good algorithm even though it produces uh, just uh, the error just as low as one uh, percent no in some particular applications especially in this case as in medical applications we will uh, dismiss the patient having a disease and this is not good also although the algorithm has a very low error. So how must we evaluate? How must we evaluate in this case the effectiveness of classification algorithm? Let's consider for them. So we have to find another criterion because sometimes we have so-called skewed data sets when the ratio of positive to negative examples is far from 50-50. So for example, as in this case, when we had just uh, one or few patients out of uh, many hundreds having a particular disease. So we must find some another suitable criterion. Okay, what can it be? Uh, let us consider, let us introduce some terminology. We will uh, say about that the decision is true positive if, if the actual decision, if the actual label was one and predicted label is also one. We will uh, call the decision as false positive when we predict one, although the actual decision, actual uh, factual uh, label was zero. False negative, actual equal to one while the predicted is zero and true negative, actual is zero and predicted is also zero. Okay. How we will use this terminology? We consider the following um, um, concept of confusion matrix. Okay, we will uh, fill this matrix two by two uh, by horizontal, we have actual classes and predictable classes. Uh, predictable labels 0 and 1 are uh, by, uh, by the vertical axis. So we fill the number of uh, true positives, the true positive decisions, false positive decisions, false negative, and true negative. So the question is how many, uh, additional question is how many um, samples, how many patients were used um, in this in this example. So we have to make a summation. We have to add numbers uh, both in uh, first and second columns to have uh, the patients which actually, who actually had, uh, who actually had the disease and who have had no disease. And we have that we have, we <laughs> obtain that we have 25 patients having disease and 75 patients having no disease. This is no so skewed uh, data as we considered in our first illustrative example, but nevertheless, just to illustrate, just to illustrate this concept of confusion matrix. So 
we can calculate the true positive, false positive, false, false negative, and number of true negative decisions. And uh, how can we use it? We can introduce finally, ultimately, the uh, concepts of precision and recall. Precision is a ratio of true positive decisions to the uh, sum of uh, true positive and false positive decisions. In fact, it means the ratio of true positive uh, decisions to the total number of predicted positive decisions, both true and false. And recall is the ratio of true positive decisions to the number of actually positive, actually positive decisions, for example, to the number of patients which actually get a disease. And uh, this also is equal to true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. So, of course, we can ask ourselves what is the precision and recall in the case of error absence? Quite a simple uh, question. Uh, both of them will be equal to one. This ideal case when we have no false, no false negatives, no false positive decisions, both precision and recall are equal to one. This is a very rare situation. Coming back to our example, which we consider, we, which we have just considered, we can find um, the precision and recall, which are equal corresponding to 0 0.75 and 0 0.6 respectively. So these are um, characteristics of this classification algorithm. Let us come back to the uh, example which we started at the beginning of this video. When we have 100 patients, only one of them has a rare disease, and we classify uh, the algorithm classified the dull algorithm classifies all the patients as having no disease just prints the value of y equal to zero so the number of true positives will be zero false positives will be also zero we will have one false negative decision and um, 99 true negative decisions in this case we can calculate precision and recall recall will be equal obviously to zero because we divide zero zero by one when we calculate precision, we will have a ratio of 0 to 0. This is an indefinite situation as in calculus. But, but in practice, if an algorithm doesn't predict even a single positive, usually we just say that precision is 0. So you can see that although the, this algorithm has a classification error of just 1%, both precision and recall are equal to 0. And to the contrary, let us consider uh, the next uh, example. Also, classification error is uh, 1%, but, but in this case, we detect the rare disease, which was one, which uh, was for, one, for only one of 100 patients, but we have also one false alarm. So we predict uh, the presence of disease for the patient who really didn't have it. So let us... Um, fill the confusion matrix with values 1, 1, 0, and 99, 98. And we can calculate the precision uh, as uh, 1 half, 0 0.5, and perfect recall. A recall is equal to 1. So you can see that although both algorithms had um, classification error of just 1%, their precision and recall are completely 0, 0, 4, uh, the uh, previous example and for this example when we uh, detected the rare disease uh, precision and recall are 0 0.5 and 1 so must be very careful while um, assessing uh, the effectiveness of classification algorithms so uh, the question the question is as a <laughs> As a homework, uh, for a non-skewed random data set, data set uh, what are the precision and recall for some random predictor? So we randomly just classify the data 0 and 1, and also our data set is also consisting of random 0 and 1s. What will be precision and recall for such algorithm? Uh, you can, if you like, you can write in the comment to this video your version. Also, you can write, obviously, all the questions or suggestions uh, for this video in the comments, in the comments. Okay, so in the ideal case, we want, of course, have to both high precision and high recall. This is a very rare situation. In fact, high precision means that when we predict the presence of disease, there is a high probability that the patient has it, really has it, actually has it. And high recall means that if there is a patient with a rare disease, there is a high probability that it will be identified. 
will be detected. And uh, let us remind the um, graph curve, logistic regression curve. Uh, we classify the decisions, we classify the, our data by comparing the value of sigmoid function with a threshold of 0 0.5. Um, and we can also consider other, in some applications, as we just considered, we can consider other thresholds. For example, having higher threshold will produce high precision and low recall. When we use low recall, low threshold, we'll have low precision and high recall. So we have to uh, in some balance. Balance. Here we have an example of curve uh, precision depending on recall. This curve is constructed by considering different thresholds for the data. For the very high thresholds, we can see that we, that we have high precision and low recall. And otherwise, uh, on the contrary, when we have a low threshold, we have high recall and low, low precision. So how to find the best algorithm? For example, we have several alg algorithms for classifying the data and precision and recall for them are given in the table here on this slide. 0 0.5, 0 0.4 for the first algorithm, 0 0.7 and 0 0.1 for the uh, second, uh, and uh, 0 0.02 and 1 for the third algorithm. If we will just consider, if we will just consider, one minute please, uh, if we will just consider um, um, average, averaging these values, we will select the algorithm three as the best algorithm, but it is um, uh, not so because we have very this algorithm cannot be the best because it produces very low precision. For example, if we classify all our data as uh, having the label one, it will produce very very low precision just in this case, and we are not interested in this situation. Although it has the uh, maximum average value between, uh, uh, of precision and recall, uh, it, it's, it's, it is not perfect. Uh, so what criterion should be used? What another um, criterion for the evaluation of algorithm? This is harmonic mean, harmonic mean of uh, precision and recall. And um, it is called F1, F1 value, F1 score. It is the uh, harmonic mean of precision and triple and it's calculated as in the formula at the upper part of the slide. And we can see here that the algorithm one is the best among these three. Although it doesn't have a very high, very high precision or very high recall, its uh, harmonic mean, its F1 score is the highest of the, these three algorithms. Also, one very important characteristic for the effectiveness of the classification algorithm is so-called area under the curve. Area under the curve, which is uh, denoted here as, as AUC. This is the area um, uh, computed for the graph of precision depending on recall. So all the area below this precision recall curve is calculated. It is obviously between, it is some value between I guess between 0 0.5 and 1. And the closer this uh, value is to 1, the better is the classification algorithm. So uh, to find the best the, uh, the best threshold for, the, um, for our classification, we also sometimes consider this vertical distance D. The higher is this uh, distance, the better is uh, the threshold. And on the following graph, we compare for different thresholds, we consider, uh, we calculate both the F1 score and this vertical distance. And we can see that uh, they occur approximately at the same value of threshold. So, so in this video, we considered the concepts of precision and uh, recall and uh, how to balance them how to find optimal value of threshold for the classification of our data, which produce both um, good recall and precision. And of course, we will um, come back to these uh, values for the evaluation of the effectiveness of classification algorithms in our next videos. Thank you very much for your kind attention.